In the 20s of last centuries, awareness that the world is not what it seems flashed in the mind of a handful of scientists. A series of experiments opened the gate leading to the quantum world. Today, 100 years after these discoveries, quantum technologies are bound to change our life. The world, conceived as being made of either ping-pong balls or waves, what I see when I throw a stone in the quiet water of a lake, was discovered to be made of fluid entities, behaving like either balls or waves, depending on the observed phenomena. Scientists discovered that atomic systems, being unveiled at the time, do not absorb or emit colors in a continuous series, but only specific lines, specific colors, that are actually characterizing every element. Light itself, governed and described by the beautiful and elegant Maxwell equation, was identified to be a collection of bullets, light bullets named photons. Albert Einstein gave his contribution in a 1905 paper investigating the properties of the photoelectric effect, one of the most mysterious quantum phenomena. He proposed the existence of photons. In 1921, for his discovery, he received the Nobel Prize. How comes that we never perceived the essence of the quantum world? Researchers in 1942 at Columbia University investigated the sensitivity of our own eyes, the most beautiful tools that you can imagine, good for nearly everything, but not for perceiving single photons. Actually, they demonstrated that we need to have at least 20 to 30 quantum of light to blink our eyes and to be able to say, I saw something. How do you see then a photon? If you cannot hear the music played by your favorite artist, you pump up the volume of your speakers. If you do not see a photon, what do you do? You then amplify the stimulus that it provides. This is the essence of the photomultiplier tube invented in 1934 by RCA, actually exploiting the photoelectric effect modeled by Einstein. You have essentially one photon in, which is inducing a cascade of electrons, one million electrons out in a nanosecond, giving you a current pulse, which is allowing you to detect the arrival of the quantum of light. This was the age of the thermoionic valves, of computers that were filling in large rooms, providing a computing capabilities that is a tiny fraction of whatever is today in the pocket of each of us, a cell phone. Quantum technologies are certainly a revolution, but we're living in the silicon age. Since its first embodiment, about one trillion of chips are produced every year and make our life fully digital. This revolution applies also to single photon sensitive devices. Yesterday, it was the photomultiplier tube. Today is a tiny piece of silicon tiled with cells that blink their eyes whenever a photon drops in. These are the so-called silicon photomultipliers. And here are these little toys in action. We have a light source, which is spraying bunches of photons on silicon photomultipliers. And the cells blink, and so they tell you how many photons we have. And it can be either one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on and so forth, offering the user the possibility to see the weakest lies and to see actually how intense the pulse was. Counting photons one by one provides researchers an amazing tool for their investigation, but it goes much beyond pure science, curiosity-driven research. It enters the development of new tools for diagnostics in medicine, for biological investigations, for new devices against terrorism, and even for cybersecurity. This will be the subject of the next video clips in the series. So, don't miss it. Stay tuned.